Hi guys, today we're going to be chatting about six-ish different things that I do to make my makeup look better. Different techniques that I've picked up over the years. Sometimes, you know, some of these I only do every now and then, some I do pretty much every time I do my makeup, but these are just different things that I've mentioned here and there that I kind of wanted to put into one video, and it's not going to be product-based, it's mostly technique, but everything that I'm wearing I'll kind of chat my way through, uh, and everything of course will be listed down in the description, and this is going to be relevant to no matter your skin type, no matter your skin concerns, um, etc, etc, skin tone, I think it will be relevant to everybody but if you enjoy this style of video please subscribe and let's go ahead and get started so the first one is kind of a given it's like telling people you to be a healthy person you should drink water but it is skincare and both nighttime and daytime skincare of course the better your skin looks the better your makeup is going to look and you want to have a good base so adding things like hydration no matter your skin type doing exfoliation masks uh, working on things like dark spots etc etc things that lead you to kind of feel like maybe you need you want to wear less makeup or just things like you just want to have a good base like your face is your canvas I have tons of different skincare routines. I'm not going to get into like specific products in this video, but I've got videos on my favorite moisturizers, favorite masks, favorite toners, all kinds of different things depending on your skin concerns. So I will link that down below, but basically you just kind of want to find your skincare routine and stick with it. It doesn't need to be anything expensive or magical or completely transform your skin, but it's just something that you definitely want to keep in mind. And over time, I think you will start to say cha see changes, but you do do need to stick with a skincare routine and kind of find what works for you, which can be the tricky part, um, but definitely things like hydration, exfoliation, SPF, all very, very important. So the next thing is something that I've heard celebrity makeup artists say time and time again, and hearing wear less foundation from a celebrity makeup artist who's doing the makeup makeup on celebrities models hearing it from youtubers who have incredible skin like you're about to lose an eye sometimes because you're just like eye roll like obviously if you have great skin you don't need to wear as much foundation first of all you don't need to wear anything you can wear as much as you want obviously it really does make your makeup look better i get so many more compliments when i'm wearing less foundation no matter my skin i have had cystic acne i've had crazy texture right now my skin is pretty well behaved but also like kind of acting up at the moment but the thing is no matter what you have be it cystic acne eczema texture etc etc the more you pile on the more obvious it's going to be that you're wearing makeup like i'm obviously not confusing anybody here whether or not i have makeup on but you want to think about things like correctors spot concealing and kind of targeting what it is you want to you want to cover up and then use your foundation just to even things out not as like a full-on mask and especially if you have oily skin i feel like the more you pile on in terms of foundation, the more likely it is to slip around no matter how matte. Uh, if you have a lot of texture, I feel like that can really show off your texture too. So sometimes makeup can help us and sometimes it can hurt us and things just look worse. So I always like to put on less foundation and then go in and spot conceal after the fact. Same can be said for actual under eye concealer. I've, I've always get the question, you know, what I'm trying to find a really full coverage concealer, but if you have, you know, hereditary or genetic dark circles or you're just real tired or whatever it is, and you have a lot of darkness, concealer can only conceal so much. So looking into things like an orangey or peachy corrector, just a little bit of that, a little bit of concealer, that is going to, I think, do a better job than piling on a ton of concealer. I've got a video on my favorite color correctors, all from the drugstore. I will link that down below and concealers, but I really feel like less foundation and put your foundation on first, then spot conceal instead of spot concealing, then foundation. I really have seen a big difference there. The next one is cream products. I really feel like cream products got a bad rep because of Instagram, because of clown contouring and all this kind of stuff. People were just like, whoa, don't want to see it. That is not relevant to me unless I'm like trying to have a viral video, which the majority of us, you know, in the day to day, we're not really looking for that. We don't need clown makeup that blends out into really, really cakey, heavy makeup. It's just not the look, you know? So I think that cream products, I mean, you've seen me do all of these things a million times, but using cream bronzers, cream highlighters, cream blushes, they really can look super, super natural on the skin. And it's just a matter of using a little bit, playing around 
around with it a little bit. In my opinion, they can have a more natural look than a powder. It's just the way people have been applying them on the internet to grab eyeballs is not the way the majority of us want to actually do it. I have done um, a cream focused video. I'll link that down below. But if you would like a more in detail and another video on cream products, like I've done, you know, some of my favorite cream highlighters and stuff, but something where I'm actually applying it to my face and showing you exactly how I do it in detail, although I have done it in lots of get ready with me's, let me know. But I just think that people either like cream products or they hate cream products, but there's such a variety in liquid cream gels. Uh, not everything is super greasy, just some of them ha help to be even more long wearing. If you feel like, you know, you're like my makeup slips off and I don't want to wear a cream blush because it's just going to move around. It's really not the case. There's some really, really good ones out there. And I just think Instagram ruined it for a little bit, but I absolutely recommend incorporating some cream products into your routine. In kind of keeping with the cream products, you'll notice that I'm using my fingers a lot with these cream products. Same when I do my under eye concealer and same when I do my eyeshadow. I can't remember which brand reposted me. I think it was Wet n Wild. They reposted me doing my makeup and I always use my fingers to pat out my concealer. And I feel like that gives me the best coverage, the best look. I pat out my fingers with my concealer. Sorry, I'm also gonna be flipping you off in all of these clips, but I pat it out with my fingers and then I go in with a brush and kind of buff out the outer edges and I remember somebody commenting and saying oh my god she's using her fingers as if I was using some like old tiny tool like it's my freaking hands of course like I don't think there's anything wrong with that I don't know what the is there a stigma? I probably wouldn't go as far as to say there's a stigma, but maybe it makes you look like an amateur or beginner or whatever it may be, but they're a great tool, as cliche as it is to say. I love it for my under eyes. I love it for cream products, just patting. You get a good amount of control. I always do like the glittery shade of my eyeshadow with my fingers. And yeah, brushes can be expensive. You don't need to have a bajillion different brushes and your fingers do a really good job. There's some foundations out there that I've had a good experience with using my fingers. I just personally don't like that. It feels a little bit more messy, but you can absolutely use your fingers. Do not be afraid. Give it a try. Um, and no matter what anybody has to say, they are great tools in my opinion. This next one is something that I do all the time and you've seen me do a bunch, but it was something that I never considered doing up until probably a couple years ago when I started playing around with lipstick concoctions and lip liners and blushes and just layering things up I think can add dimension. A lot of the time when people ask me, what lipstick are you wearing? And I'm like, I'm wearing three or I'm wearing a lip liner, a lipstick and a lip gloss. It really, a lot of the time you just can't get that look from one lip gloss, one lip product. It really is the combination of products, be it colors, textures, the layers, the ombre, it really can make a difference. So places where I like to layer up, the first is, the first one I wanna mention is my cheeks. So sometimes, this, this isn't something I do very often, but I will take a more kind of neutrally rosy toned blush and put that all over my cheeks and then pop a more bright blush towards the um, apples of my cheeks if I don't wanna have a bright blush all the way. So today, I use that kind of rosier L'Oreal blush and then the brighter NYX blush towards the front. And these are very subtle things. It's not things that are going to be like, whoa, what did you do? But it's just little things that I feel like elevate your makeup. The biggest place I love to layer is the lips. I have two different examples for you. Oh, sorry, I forgot about the highlighters as well. So the reason I love uh, the Fenty Split Pan highlighters, especially this Mean Money Hustla Baby shade, is because you're getting two different textures of highlighters. And obviously these kinds of things are gonna take a little bit more time, but in the split pan of the Fenty, it's not much more time. So I took the satin shade first, put it down the center of my nose, on my cheekbones, kind of highlighted more liberally because it's not a super bright shade. Then I went in with the more Beeman shade, just just on the tops of my cheekbones because I really wanted that area to pop. The other place I love to layer is the eyelashes. I almost forgot that word, but I love, like I'm not a false lash wearer. I do occasionally, but on the, you know, 95% of the time I'm wearing mascara and there's so many great drugstore mascaras out there. So again, you do not need to go out and buy three mascaras, <laughs> but firstly, I love using a lash primer. Essence and L'Oreal make incredible lash primers. Then I like to go in with a more volatile volumizing traditional fluffier bristle brush mascara. Then I like to follow up with a more 
uh, stiff and plastic bristle brush. So I'm getting the volume from the primer, the oomph from the primer, then I'm getting really good volume. Like these all work great on their own, but I'm just talking about elevating things. Then I go in with a more voluminous mascara, then I go in with lengthening so I get the max volume, mat max length, and I really, really love that look, and I feel like it gives you a false lash look. Even if you want to skip out on primer, I do love using, I before I got into lash primers, I would all often mix mascaras and do a voluminous and a more lengthening and I really really love that look but the other place that I was talking about earlier is the lips so I have two examples that I want to show you this first example is well they both include lip liners and I think and I talked about this recently that lip liners for me were always very intimidating I always thought about that stark lip look from the 90s which was like pretty cool but again not great for the day to day but I love using lip liners that are a little bit rosy brown a little bit deeper than my lip color I've got a video on all of my favorites to kind of ombre my lips but not in an aggressive way it's making things more wearable and just blending more into the skin so you don't have that stark difference so for example this lipstick that I'm using today is from Colourpop and I'm lining my lips with a Colourpop lip liner BFF3 is one of my favorites and I line the outside of my lips and I fill in kind of the outer corners. Then I just go in with a little dibble dabble of that bright Barbie pastel pink, one of the only lip shades I won't wear. And when I blend it out with my fingers, it gives a gorgeous, gorgeous look. And I actually bought this lipstick by accident and this combination ended up being one of my favorites. Sometimes I amp up the pink a little bit more, but it made it so much more wearable. And it's never a color that I could just get straight out of the tube because I do have that distinction of the deeper to the lighter and it's kind of just lighter in the center like without it it would be a very Nicki Minaj stark pastel pink on the lips the other layering that I love to do is again starting with that same lip liner it's not a hundred percent necessary but then going in with a more rosy brown liquid lipstick and then topping it off with something peachy in the center that is like my jam if I was to have a signature lip it would be this kind of thing it is what I wear all the time and the color sorry the covergirl lipstick that i'm wearing in the middle uh, that is one that i wear all the time to do that kind of thing and it, you don't necessarily need to go get a rosy brown and a peachy and a brownie rose lip liner but just kind of consider these combinations for your skin tone for your looks for what you're doing and you're like you know what is unwearable on me or what do i feel is unwearable how can i make it more wearable because wearing a lip liner with really really beige lipsticks has totally changed the game for me and made like i'm now able to wear those kinds of shades without I like feeling like it looks like I have concealer on my lips and then lastly this is like not necessarily obvious but a lot of us are already doing this anyways I love sprays I really like using a spray to prep for makeup and I love using a spray to set my makeup even if it's not setting it in place like something that's gonna lock it in place all day just kind of setting the look and it really feels like it blends everything together so today I was using the wet n wild Photo Focus Rose Primer. I use that to prep my face. And even if you have like an oily skin type, as long as you're not using something super, super dewy, especially if you have kind of a matte face from your primer or whatever it may be, a little bit of that just to get things moving when you're putting on your foundation I think is really helpful and then at the end of the makeup depending on the look you're going for depending on your skin type I recommend recommend setting everything with a spray be it a mattifying spray a long wearing spray a dewy spray no matter the spray it's gonna be a liquid right so I really feel like it helps to blend things together and kind of just set the look and make things look more like skin. So there you have it. I hope you found that helpful. Let me know if you would like more of these. I've got little things that I do here and there that I might mention in videos and may not, you know, specifically have a video on. And if you would like to see any further information about cream contouring, etc., etc., I do have tons of links down below for you to check out. But if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.